Hello YouTube, I'm back with the next Yu-Gi-Oh! review. And as you can see, I have the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Movie DVD with me here. So, as you can probably guess, I'm reviewing Yu-Gi-Oh! The Movie, or otherwise kind of known as A Pyramid of Light. I actually thoroughly enjoyed this movie. This movie was probably one of the... I mean, for being a first ever Yu-Gi-Oh! Movie officially, I mean, granted, yes, it had the other Yu-Gi-Oh! Movie, but that was in Japan, and that was like years ago. This was only available in the dub at the time. It did not have a couple of mistakes in it. I mean, namely, one of the cards that Yugi uses was Diffusion Wave Motion. It should have been Double Spell. But they wasn't it. That got corrected in the Japanese version. Whenever I think that was like a year later, they got that. But it was awesome. I mean, nice villain. Great villain. I mean, granted, yes, they used the magic number 5,000 years, but he came in kind of completely he was targeting them the entire movie, pretty much. He targeted everyone in the entire movie, including Pegasus, although not until the very end. He kind of really made his first sort of hint that he was coming with Pegasus right at the end of the duel when Kaiba wanted to see, you know, he wanted the one card to take down Yugi's God cards. And he found two cards instead of one. And doesn't buy into the fact that Pegasus said there was only one. We know that's true, because we saw, you see uh, Anubis actually insert the card into the deck. Or wherever it was. I think they were probably, they were probably a little bit separately. But, I mean, I mean, granted, yeah, we all get to, get to see Yuki's friends get stuck in the Millennium Puzzle again, but this time, they're not just in the Millennium Puzzle, you know, trying to get out. They have to deal with all sorts of zombies and all that. And, and this is where we get to see Taya behave w beyond even the expectations of even the characters themselves. They... They, I mean, especially given what Taya did just seconds earlier. I mean, she gets she encounters one of the mummies, basically one of the uh, decapitated pieces, and then freaks out, and then, which is kind of I think what everyone expected her to do. In fact, she's always been kind of afraid of stuff of that nature, and then she just starts pounding the snot out of them, only to no avail. Because they obviously, as they're zombies, they don't die. At least they're yeah, these were actually mummies, but I mean. And itself, at least they, they made it much different. I mean, granted, they even showed a little bit of little bit of nostalgia from the very beginning of the uh, TV series, Yugi assembling the Money and Puzzle. Granted, last I checked, we didn't actually get to see that because that was from the. It was not shown in the dub because it was not. It was part of the series where. No, did they show it? I don't think that. I don't think the dub actually ever made it into. Because I think it was part of the little 26 episode series from, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero, which was too violent for us to really have on TV. That would have butchered the whole thing. We got a couple of clips very early on in Season 1, but when the animated series came came back, came on uh, with Duelist Kingdom, we got a couple of clips. That was it. They couldn't have anything else. It would have been completely destroyed if nothing left to put in here. The movie is awesome. I mean, you get, you get to see Kaiba duel Yu-Gi-Oh! again. I mean, that's... Awesome, and you get to see the new cards that Kaiba uses, and probably most interestingly is the fact that it's a lot less censored than you'd think. And by that I mean, like, the usual stuff that 4Kids often does with the cards, they get edited out, you don't get to see the names, you get to see the effects. Here, you get to see both the names and the effects. And they even go far, I mean, they kind of change all the sound effects, even the light point graphics are the Japanese version. Which is weird, considering the fact that this was in the dub first, as like I said before. This, Japanese didn't get it until much later. But what's also nice is that when you go in to see the movie, you got cards. The problem was Blue Eyes Shining Dragon, which I think you can see here, that's the monster here, you couldn't even use right away. The reason because the monster required to summon it, Blue Eyes Old Dragon, did not exist. And it would take several years, not until Shining Jump, I think it was their 10th anniversary, where they actually finally released the card. Japan wouldn't have had a problem because they already had it. They've had it for like a number of years, even. So it's kind of sad, and I guess it's kind of a good thing that the card was, like, extremely rare. I don't know how many of them were actually produced and what the odds were of actually getting one, because you got one of those little entry packs. I ended up getting two, because my dad ended up getting one as well. Kind of dumb, but okay. I managed to get two of the four. And I only have a copy of Blue Eyes Shining Dragon myself, but I definitely find a use for it. But even when you do get on the field, it's not that great of a card to begin with. Because unless you have a whole bunch of dragons, you're going to need to have summoned Blue-Eyes Ultra Dragon the normal way to even have a chance of getting monsters. Because by then, 
it'll have about 1,200 attack points and be stronger than... It'll still be weaker than Blue Eyes Ult of Dragon. So it's kind of like, eh, okay. And then, but the thing you get out of it is the fact that it can negate card effects and destroy them. That will target it. And you can see that card here, twice. I mean, heck, even, even, even things that normally would be left out. Things like die and death. I mean, cause literally, they allow the word die in the, in the dub airing of the movie. They never allowed that in the dub, in the, uh, in the dub airings of the TV show. Ever. And of course, this was around, like, the airing of season three, kind of, sort of, just for season four. I mean, that kind of brings up the other error that they made, where the, the uh, little announcer guy, the, the uh, person on TV, was saying that they just, Yugi defeated Kaiba to win the championship. That's not what happened. Though they have the right clips, even if they're in Japanese, which is weird, which is probably also weird. I would have thought they would have probably dealt with them any old way. I mean, granted, it's sort of a spoiler, because eh, you're seeing the clips, but yet, I don't think we were at, yeah, we don't, actually, I don't think, do we get there? I'm not sure. I, oh, you probably, if you've never seen season three before seeing the movie, then you're probably not, it's not really a spoiler, because you don't know where that's coming from. That could be... I mean, because if you're going by the movie, then that means that Kaiba was successfully beaten in the finals. Although that's not actually what happened, so you're not really losing anything at all. But I love all the action that went on there. I mean, I saw this thing in theaters, so that's... It was awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was nice to see a lot of Yuki and Kaiba duel again. I mean, that's always good. I don't know how many times you see Yuki and Kaiba duel. I mean, they, they dueled again. Twice, technically. In uh, Dark Side of Dimensions. little spoiler alert right there. I'll be getting more into that later when the DVD comes out, but won't be spoiling how they do, how, what ends up happening, though you might be able to figure it out. But yeah, I would definitely recommend this. And by the way, if you actually got the DVD, you actually got a copy of the Pyramid of Light. Not that that's really great of a card. You couldn't really do anything. I don't I'm trying to think. That might have been the other, the third, I think there were a total of four cards you could get in total. Three were common. And I think Pyramid of Light was among them. And then they re-released Pyramid of Light with the DVD. Which is kind of cool. I mean, kind of very fitting. Too bad the card isn't really any good. Especially since you can't do anything with it until you end up getting the Sphinx cards from the exclusive pack, which came out, I think, a year later or so. And obviously a lot of them are watered down. I mean, I think I remember Vinny and Great Sphinx was rumored to be a monster with 6,000 attack points, which would have been awesome. Although probably incredibly hard to summon. And it's still probably been watered down. It got watered down pretty heavily. I mean, granted, it could still hit 6,000 thanks to its effect. It gets 6,500 without any other bonuses for like a mere 500 light points. But you have to get the, you have to make it hit the field first. Although we do have a little bit of ways to get around that now thanks to a wild monster appears. But I would definitely recommend this movie. If you haven't seen it, and the only way you can see it now is on DVD if you haven't, or I'm sure one of those online sites that, uh, you know, I'll let you see it. I mean, it's definitely a good movie, especially for being its, like, first official kind of next step from the show to the, to the movie. I mean, granted, yeah, a couple errors in it, as I said, but lots of action in it. I mean, they even... Anubis doesn't even give up after that. He gets beaten. And he says, no, I'm not done with you guys yet. I'm going to make you duel for real. And I was like, screw the holograms. Now I'm going to take you on with my own monster. And you guys are a pretty awesome monster. I forget what they actually... I don't think I actually know what it is, to be honest. But it's awesome. Who cares what it is? And then they use Blue Eyes Shining Dragon to finish him off, but... It's kind of also interesting, it's kind of too bad the effects from the cards that they actually show don't match the, the, they're not written the way they would have been at the time. They're written more back when the cards first came out, so Monster Reborn, you know, would say this is considered a special summon, all that type of text, although some of the cards weren't even in the proper font, you know, I think about it. So, like, when Toon Summon Skull was played, it's kind of weird how certain cards didn't have the proper font, even though they were well within being released. 
And then it kind of brings back the other monsters like Jack's Knight, Queen's Knight, and King's Knight. When King's Knight was running the field, Yugi plays Queen's Knight, but the cards are back, but they're mirrored. And you can see this in the manga, which also the uh, anime manga, which also got released in that game with Slife of the Sky Dragon. It's a pretty good way to get the card right there. It's actually paying ten bucks for the uh, for the card. And I'm sure nowadays it's probably a lot more expensive because it's harder to get. But definitely, I would see if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, I would definitely see this movie. And to be perfectly honest, I will say it is better than Dark Side of Dimensions. Sad, yes, I'm probably in the minority for this. But I actually enjoy this more than Dark Side of Dimensions. You'll find out why when I actually get to review the movie, which will probably be when the DVD comes out. And by the way, I'll probably be reviewing, uh, as well, Bonds Beyond Time. That'll be the next movie I review for when Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu review cycle comes back again, which will probably be in a couple weeks. But oh, Just for uh, grins, here's the back of the box. It's pretty awesome. I mean, this is definitely a movie I would worth... I was stoked for I enjoyed it. You probably will, too. I'm sure some of you are looking at me going, What on earth are you talking about? Well, that's just my opinion on the movie. So that's that's my review on Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie, a.k.a. Pyramid of Light. 